Hi everybody, my name is Pierre Tessier. I'm with the Wavefront team by VMware. And today we're gonna to talk about Join, a powerful new functionality in Wavefront that allows you to find hidden relationships in your data. Let's go in and talk about the different Join and Join types you could find inside of Wavefront. Now, generally speaking, when we talk about joining data, we could classify it under seven different types. And within those types, we could even categorize them within left, which includes your left inclusive and left exclusive, which we'll explain in a little bit. Your right, which is the same thing as left, just the right side or B side of these diagrams. And finally, the one includes both. And here you will see inner join, as well as full outer, and the not so popular full outer exclusive. And we're gonna dive into the use cases used for each one of these. And altogether, we have all seven. And with Wavefront, we support all seven different types. So what does the syntax look like to use this in Wavefront? And you can see an example of it right here. We're gonna take join, and we're gonna join one query with the name of TS1, inner join with another query, and we're gonna also give this the name of TS2. This is the join input. A very familiar syntax here for those who are knowledgeable of the SQL join syntax. You'll see we support inner join, left join, left outer, and all those various other variations. Next, we get into the join condition. We support two syntaxes here, the simple form using, or a more complex form with on, where you wanna specify very specific join attributes that you wanna go against. And here, they don't even have to match up. So you can say, I want the ID from one field and the tag called other ID from another series. Finally, we get into the metric output. Uh, this is one or many different metadata we wanna output with our series. So the metric name, the source name, or any point tag that needs to be part of it. And the last section is the actual value that we're gonna use. When we're talking about time series data, every single piece has a value and a timestamp. We're gonna align on the timestamp and render the value that you display right here. Now, let's take a look at some sample data that we're gonna use and examples to follow. On the left side here, I've got several series. Six in all, no area, but I do have an environment and an ID, and one of them has a zone point tag. On my right side, or B, we have one series with an area, environment, ID again, and no zones. Our goal here is to really, we're gonna to try to join these on ID for every single one of them. And you can see really there's only a couple records or series that will match across both sides. So let's dig into it some more. Inside of Wavefront, when we take all our data and we stack it all up, you can see it all right here. Everything from series B or side B and side A combined together and we have all of them listed out. Now, if we do an inner join with them where we say inner join from A as TS1 against B as TS2 using the ID tag and we're gonna output the metric name the source from TS1, or the left side, a special point tag we're gonna call SRC, which will be the source from the right side, and finally the environment and ID tags from the left side, and we're gonna output the left side's value. Because only two series match, we only get two items back in our results, and this makes a lot of sense, pretty simple. Let's look at the left join. Here, we just, same syntax as above, but left outer join instead of inner. And we're gonna use the exact same point tags as we had defined above. And you can see here, now we have far more series. It's really all the series from the left side plus the two matching on the right side and how they matched. And if we do the inverse using a right outer join, and in this case here, we're just gonna specify the source from the right side and SRC from the left side those other point tags will come from the right as well as its value, and we can see the results. Again, the ones with SRC are only the series that matched on both, and we include all the records from the right no matter what. The full outer join, very similar. Only real difference here we wanna focus on is the value output. And here we're gonna output values from both sides. Make sure we include them all, and you can see the mishmash of all of those series put together into a single result set. Now let's get into some more complex use cases. 
But before we do that, why would I use these specified joins? Well, maybe you're doing something like we call full stack observability. You might have container workloads that are running inside of a uh, platform such as PKS or PCF or just Kubernetes. And that platform is on top of a virtualization layer such as vSphere on top of bare metal. And you'd like to understand how the application metrics associated with one container or many containers for a given app and all the way down to the virtualization layer. In the case of PCF, for example, you will have an ID tag for your Diego cells, which run your containers. And that ID is some Bosch ID, which is maps back to an ID attribute on a VM, which maps back to a VM name onto an ESX host, eventually onto the metal. And using this here, we could join across those attributes, even if they don't line up. Now let's jump into exclusive join. This case here, we are introducing a new function called remove series. Just like when you do an exclusive join in SQL where you need to do where field equals null or something of that nature, we're going to do a similar kind of syntax using remove series. And in this case here, we're just going to say bring in another point tag. We're going to call it other ID, which is from the right side. And what we want to do is say whenever other ID has a value, remove it. And what we're left with is all the records from the left which do not have a match on the right, as you can see from the four right here. Similarly, we could do this with a right exclusive join, where we get all the records from the right which do not have a match from the left. So why would I want to use this? Maybe you've got a service which takes a couple of minutes to start up, and you're scaling out. Service, maybe it takes three and a half minutes to start up. We have metrics on that container. We know the container's uptime. And the only way we know if that service started up is if we're sending metrics. But how do we know if it did not start up? We could use an exclusive join to find all containers that have an uptime greater than, say, five minutes, but no related app instance metrics. And this will allow us to find all containers where the app did not start up right. And it doesn't have to be containers, it could be VMs. It could be anywhere you could put your workloads. And this is really good to help you understand, did I start right? Am I running properly? Or maybe something failed and you want to catch that as well. You could do that using exclusive joins. The last one is using a full outer exclusive. This is very similar to before, except we introduce one more function here called collect, which allows us to stack up the exclusive from the left with the exclusives from the right to create a single view. And what we have here is all the series from the left and from the right, which have no matches at all. Now, altogether, we've been able to cover all seven different join types in Wavefront. You are encouraged to try this yourself. You can go to wavefront.com and click on the sign up button to get a free trial. Thank you very much, everybody.